introduce uh, our, our company and then after yeah. that will be you and then you share a screen sure right okay i guess you start now are you okay are you ready why not <laughs> all right all right um, so Okay, everyone. So, Kiara, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore. Uh, I'm Manu from ACC Global Malaysia. I'm an education counselor here. And thank you to each and every one of you for being here with us today. So, let me just start with a short intro of ourselves. So, basically, ACC Global has been operating uh, since 2008, and it's a professional body that helps students to connect to the right institutions in New Zealand. So, with our experience, the dream of studying abroad in New Zealand will be a simpler, smoother, and easier process. So today marks the first time for us, as is global in collaboration with Education New Zealand, uh, proudly hosting ENZ 360 Live with all of you. And you'll be able to engage with any of the eight universities on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. So just search for ACC Global in Malaysia, Singapore, or Indonesia, and you can view them live uh, from 8 to 11, which today, today is the last day. So at 12, to, oh, sorry, 12 p.m. now, and there's one more session later at 1.30 p.m. Um, this is Malaysia Singapore time, yeah. So Indonesia is uh, an hour before. So please help to like and share this live. And if you have any questions or just want to say hi to us, just drop them in the comment box um, in whichever platform you're watching for. I mean, from yeah. So once again, um, a very warm welcome to each and every one of you watching. And I'm pleased to have uh, Miss Annie Go, international major from Lincoln University, New Zealand. Um, I will not take too much of your time, of everyone's time as well. And let's welcome Annie to introduce herself to all of you. I hope today will be a very fun and full of learning and also an experience session. And over to you, Annie. Selamat siang. Xiao <laughs> hao. Uh, Harimai. Namaste. Um, good afternoon from um, Christchurch. I firstly, I want to apologize about my very um, full on busy um, office. Uh, this just to give you an idea about how in the back office international <laughs> uh, manager works. My name is Annie Go. If you can see that from my name, you were right. I am from Malaysia. Saya anak Batu Pahat. Yeah, so, but that's just my limited Bahasa. I um, I work for Lincoln University, one of the eight universities in New Zealand and the New Zealand Specialist University. So before we probably do any more, I just, well, I just want to touch base a little bit about um, the, the Specialist University. That um, so one of the good things about New Zealand universities are, is that all the eight universities are all ranked top 500 and all um, New Zealand government universities. We do not have private universities. And Lincoln University is a specialist land-based university. That is our areas is to do with the land and um, what we love. That's me. <laughs> Should I, um, uh, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to um, show you a little bit of presentation or should we just keep going? I can start with presentation, that's fine. Sure, why not? <laughs> um, so I think you can see my presentation, right? Hold cool. on, it's loading. Right. Yep. yep, you can see now. Yeah, so I just thought we um, to do is about, today is about sharing of information and just have a chat about um, why New Zealand, why Lincoln, and also um, I will hopefully some of the students will have some questions about what you know life and subjects options etc. So this mm -hmm. session is about you. Please feel free to ask any questions. But yeah. obviously, coming from the South Island of New Zealand, I will also be waving the um, tourism flags. And so post COVID please come to visit firstly New Zealand but also come and visit us in the South Island of New Zealand. So I just firstly I think always people always ask uh, where's the your location, where should I go, what should we do etc. Now um, and also people always ask me about why New Zealand yeah. yeah. 
Um, so I think what I want to talk a little bit is about, uh, I remember, so I came to New Zealand as an international student, probably before you were born, <laughs> but that is okay. <laughs> um, uh, but I remember uh, many years ago when I first told people that I was coming to New Zealand, people said, oh, why New Zealand is too far away? But also I remembered one of the uh, a really respected um, 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 colleagues of mine said, oh, New Zealand is very beautiful and that's about it. So I think for me, the, the well, always true. <laughs> It's the I think it's the most one of the best um, kept secrets in the world in terms of the advantages and the simplicity of the lifestyle and the challenges that we experience in Malaysia, for example, the traffic and all that you you don't have the same level of skill of the problems that we have in 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 New Zealand. So that's what I love about it. But as a country, I think one thing that I really appreciate is I'm encouraged to be who I want to be. I was, my potential was being developed and I, I have a voice here. I, um, as a person, than just my look, my gender or, or where I come from or where my family background is. So I think that's one thing that I really, really like. And you have that, the sense of freedom and the advantages of what I can do with what I know and my knowledge and the can-do attitude. And, and that's my training. And I hope that international students who are thinking about um, making a difference, um, I think New Zealand has that advantages that, um, that I really appreciate. Yeah. So before, so that's my sales page for New Zealand, but also just also want to say that it's actually not that far. <laughs> we are only like maybe one to two, maybe three flights away. So life is a journey, right? As and in this COVID situation, we all know that it's a it's a matter of time. Yeah. So post COVID, hopefully by then you'll be able to come and see us. But if you only have two weeks of your life that you can spend, come to link, um, come to the South Island of New Zealand. Two weeks, you can see a lot of things. And yeah, please, yeah. So where I come from is Christchurch. Um, it's the gateway to the South Island, and Lincoln University is about twenty kilometers from the city center. Now, as a city, it's five hours to drive to Queenstown. You can go skiing and diving, and you can go to do lots of things. Now, in our university, we have a um, snow club. <laughs> so in winter, you if you want to go um, skiing, but also go surfing, you can do it in one day. Morning, go skiing, and in the evening, you can go surfing. Now, um, if Eugene can help me to play this quick video about the, the city, that will give you an idea about... Um, What do you think? Have I convinced you? <laughs> it is pretty good. <laughs> it's very yeah. Nice.
yeah so if you um if you follow instagram i'm sure everybody does uh if you follow instagram for the crushes nz and hashtag crushes nz or explore crushes that you'll get to see lots and lots of beautiful current images that was actually kind of end of winter beginning of spring now we are full on summer <laughs> um so do you know that's now um at the moment our sun sets at about 9 p.m wow in the <laughs> evening. yeah <laughs> this is why i have um it's really difficult <laughs> it's long yeah. days where you have to try to do as much things as possible <laughs> pretty yeah. much <laughs> yeah um so today it's a very su sunny day so um i will try to keep the conversation within an hour because uh yeah after it's friday after work so i'm gonna go for a run or do something um mm -hmm. interesting yeah so um just i know that today is actually about lincoln university i should talk a little bit about my university <laughs> so uh what you can see in the powerpoint that is how we started in 1878 we are uh, one of the oldest universities in new zealand we are number three oldest and our story started with farming so what you can see there they were sheep running around <laughs> and it is true, but they are now in the designated um, places. You can, on our campus, um, in some part of the campus, you can see um, rabbits um, hopping around. And um, there are, because of our park lights um, campus, you can, there are lots, um, lots of bird lights. Uh, you, um, a, couple, a few weeks ago, I saw a family of ducks with ducklings. Oh. Yeah so please do come and visit us it's um quite cool now lincoln university a key a few facts is that we we are a specialist university we ranked top 400 in the world and top 100 in um agriculture so because i sure we started in 1878 um and with us, uh, we only actually have three faculties. So we are a small university with um, a very uh, concentrated focus of um, uh, education efforts. So we specialize in um, land-based subjects. So what you can see is, but just because we are our agriculture heritage doesn't mean that we um, only att attract students from the rural sec um, areas. So we have a, uh, about 50% of our students come from urban areas like cities or say countries like Singapore, Malaysia and Indonesia. But we do have, um, within New Zealand, we do have quite a few of the students come from the, should I say the farming sector, continue their family traditions. So there are a couple of things that I really love is we do, um, uh, we have farms within within driving distance. We have about four farms that, um, including a commercial dairy farms that students can visit and we ranked number one in New Zealand for the research rev um, revenue per academic staff member. So even though the subjects that we teach are quite um, focused and quite specialised, but the, num the research revenue in terms of the commercial research revenue that our um, academic staff bring into the university per, um, per, per staff member, we rank number one, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, so then you say, oh, so how many students do you have any? <laughs> um, so, uh, so for us, we are, our, we have 3000 students a year. I'm just trying to navigate my, um, my mouse. I've kind of lost it a little bit. Um, so oh. we have, yeah, we have 3000 students a year and about 40% of our students are from, uh, Seven, uh, 80 different countries so 40 percent of our students are international students and so partly because they are here to uh, because of the subjects that we teach so we have three faculty uh, faculty of agriculture and life sciences faculty of environment society and design and also faculty of agribusiness and commerce so what you can see that the subjects are listed here we teach from undergraduate 
up to postgraduate from um, to master PhD level. And so in terms of the sum of the specializations, agriculture, horticulture, and my personal favorite is verticulture, the science of um, grapes. Um, and also the, hence uh, another specialization, which is food, wine, and beer. So in our 100 level courses, first year degree students, regardless of what subjects you, you, you study, you can actually learn how to make beer. Um, for our Singaporean students, quite a few of them did come through to do our landscape architects, which I'll talk a little bit more. Um, we do have a, a couple of Malaysian students doing our environmental management studies as well. So on that note, I would like um, if my um, if Eugene can play a little bit of video clip just to show you um, our university campus, that would be really awesome. Thank you. Join us at Lincoln and get ready to meet the demand for qualified professionals. Lincoln offers world-class facilities for research and learning. Lecturers who know you by name, dedicated wellbeing and support staff, and practical learning experiences to connect you with the industry before you even complete your degree. I chose to study at Lincoln University because it had the additional major of parks and outdoor recreation and other environmental degrees that I'm interested in. What I enjoy about Lincoln is small campus size and approachable lecturers. I chose Lincoln for its sports scholarships and it also offers um, food science, which I'm really interested in. I've enjoyed studying at Lincoln because one, it's highly academic and a great course. And secondly, the social aspect of the Lincoln University is incredible. Lincoln is special because the students get a hands-on experience at the same time as learning the theory for their discipline. I feel this really sets them up well for a career in whatever industry they choose. Students should come to Lincoln if they really want their degree to mean something. If they want to do a science degree and they want to align that degree with New Zealand's biggest, most important industry. One of the other things you learn well at Lincoln is how to engage and understand uh, multiple perspectives. And we work often in small classes so that you're able to debate and learn from one another. At Lincoln, you're not just another number. We get to know your name and to know who you are. If we think about what future careers could be and what shortages we may have in the future, I think one of them will be proposing solutions to add value to the current food production. There will be more and more opportunities for science graduates, even outside the traditional scientific jobs. Horticulture is a vital part of New Zealand's future. There's a number of areas that students could go into, vegetable and fruit production, nursery production and so forth and the future is bright for any students qualifying from here. The agricultural industry needs people who can think, people who can understand the first principles of how plants grow, how animals grow, how we put production systems together, how we integrate those into the environment. At Lincoln, environment and sustainability is at the core of what we do. Our staff are very engaged in these issues and have a really broad uh, range of experience and knowledge. So when we talk to food companies and food industries, they often ask us for graduates who have expertise in different areas, of, especially for food production, because it's very diverse. Our students go into a range of careers in both the public and private sectors, and they make a big difference in their communities and to the environment. What makes Lincoln special for students studying here is the uh, number of field trips they go on and the practical hands-on training in the labs. Once I finish study at Lincoln University, I'd love to start my own orchard. After I finish my study at Lincoln, I want to use my food science degree and maybe go into nutrition, um, continue to play basketball and maybe own a gym. After Lincoln, I'm planning on going to the arable agronomy field and studying crop science. When I finish my degree, I'd like to work in the environmental sector on cultural and sustainable issues. Join us at Lincoln and get ready to meet the demand for qualified professionals. Grow your career at Lincoln University. Apply now. Okay, just have to leave you our main video. <laughs> That's actually yeah. quite cool. I was quite impressed. <laughs>
Um, what you saw there, uh, Dr. Luca, he is, um, his, uh, his specialization is um, food innovation. And when you saw Dr. Amber there, that's talking about applying um, the knowledge. She's actually from our wine science department. So that's quite cool. Um, so today there are a couple of three that I was told to um, feature maybe some of our cool programs. So I just thought based on the countries that um, students, um, the Singapore, Malaysia and Indonesia, I will feature three programs that um, some of our Malaysian, Singaporeans or um, Indonesian students are currently uh, have been or study with us. So what you see there is the list of the bachelor degrees that we offer at Lincoln University. And this is it, we don't offer, um, so because with our specialist nature, we are focusing on the area that we are very strong in. And what you can see out of the 16 bachelor degrees, um, some of them, the color that I highlighted that in pur pur purple color, we have, they do have a compulsory practical work or an industry-based project. Um, a typical bachelor degree in New Zealand is a, it's mostly three year studies, but there are some programs that are four years, like a, a equivalent to an honors degree or what we call professional degree. So, um, so today I'm just going to talk a little bit about the three bachelor degrees that our feature is our Bachelor of Agribusiness and Food Marketing, which is for students who might who are interested in food industry, interested in agricultural production, but don't necessarily want to work in the agriculture fields in the sense that you may not want to work in the, on the farm, but you are still like to be involved in this sector. And I just want to say that they are, they, um, globally, we have some challenges upcoming as, um, as a community. Um, COVID has presented some challenges for us. What it has highlighted to us is also they are, um, apart from the essential workers, the health um, um, professionals, we actually have a group of unsung heroes, which is our far which are our farmers, the um, food production people, um, and also the people who move those produce to our uh, consumer. Because without them, with the lockdown, we will have nothing to survive. Yeah. So I a big kind of shout out to this um group of unsung hero. But so what it means is so this is um a lot of this kind of um students actually are those are the subjects that our students at Lincoln University study. So so this it has really highlighted the importance of agribusiness and food marketing. But if we just put away, put aside COVID. One of the big challenges for, for the global community is that we, our population continue to grow, but our planet, we only have one planet. <laughs> um, and we can see really clearly with the um, climate issues. <laughs> Sometimes it gets hotter than we can be, you know. So, so there has been some challenges. And, but it is estimated that by 2050, we will need to produce more um, food for 2 billion more people. Now, how do we do that? What, how do we do that without um, overwhelming our planet? Where can we find enough food for 9 billion people? So those are the, some of the things that I may not have to answer, but these are some of the challenges that we face. The other thing is like the concerns about animal welfare. You know, and previously we have challenges in things like swine flu, um, bird flu, those kind of things. That maybe some of the some of those challenges might be related to intensive farming. And the other things that we are um, facing is um, on one hand we have uh, challenges to produce another food, but on the other hand we continue to have the challenges for dealing with food waste. Now, did you know that? Um, uh, we in New Zealand itself, we throw away hundred about hundred and fifty seven thousand tons of food a year. <laughs> that is uh equivalent to about one point one seven billion New Zealand dollars each year, enough to feed the city of Dunedin, the whole city of Dunedin, for three years. <laughs> that is quite a scary stat. 
Now, so on one hand, we can we can do our bit to reduce the food waste. On the other hand, how can we be smarter about reducing the wastage? And also things like obesity, malnutrition, the lifestyle changes, those are the things. And so this increased demand in also in healthy food. So, um, so but so for us, those are the kind of global challenges. But for New Zealand itself, um. We, the New Zealand government has a goal to double our primary industry exports in real term from 32 billion per year in June 2012 to um, over 64 billion by 2025. Now we've got five years to achieve that growth. <laughs> and um, um, despite COVID, right. Also that there are some challenges itself because traditionally we export a lot of products for like the, for commodities. So Fonterra, for example, they wholesale like big bulk um, milk powder, but how do we actually then make them into high value products that because we may not have the capacity to continue to produce more. So how do we, um, maintain the current production, but increase the value without um, compromising our environment, um, the impact that we potentially have on our environment. So how do we um, don't uh, make maximizing the value, which is quite important. So you probably, I don't know, I think in Indonesia about 13, 0.4% of the total GDP is from the agribusiness um, sector. Um, that is quite big. For Malaysia, that is 8%. Um, for New Zealand, that is 18% um, of the New Zealand GDP. So agribusiness is actually quite important in New Zealand. It's as important to Malaysia and also Indonesia. Singapore is different. Singapore um, do have to um, look at um, developing more self-sustainable um, agriculture production, but those are some of the things that potentially we could have. So, um, so what do you study in agribusiness and food marketing? So you, you involve that whole uh, process of food production from processing, marketing, distribution from farm to the consumer. So if you think about input to production, that is for, that is, um, for our, uh, I'm just going to say, for input to production, that's our batch of commerce in agriculture students. But the processing, marketing to consumer, those are the what our students are studying. So we developed this qualification with um, some of our key industry partners so that we do understand a little bit of production. We, uh, we do understand food science, but it's not a hardcore farming degree which is, suits our urban students from Southeast Asia. <laughs> yeah, so um, so what our students will study is, is a combination of business, supply chain management, internet, international trades, but also you understand a little bit about food sciences, the processing quality, and also how do you develop new products. So um, you understand the concept of um, global system. And a lot of the time we do also encourage our students to, um, to look at uh, study abroad, participating in um, an exchange program. So, yeah, so I think I'm just going to, so this is just to, to give you an idea about the concept of the Bachelor of Agribusiness and Food Marketing. One thing I do like about this degree is that there is a uh, um, 18 weeks of compulsory practical work components, which our students must do during their um, summer break. Yeah, so if you are interested in business studies, but want to be a little bit different um, um, and um, have, you know, combination of science and business study, this could be an option for you. So our graduates have gone to work in, um, in various um, industry, including um, dairy. And for example, Judy, this is one of our Chinese graduate. She's working as a project coordinator for an ENSCO, which is um, a major um, 
meet for the um, export company who also based on the um, on our campus, who has an office on the campus. Now for Lincoln, each of our bachelor degree, we do have a um, program director or what we call course advisors. So if you want, if you are interested in finding out more about what this sub, uh, what this bachelor degree, please visit um, Nick's profile. So I hope that we, uh, for students who are interested in food, come and join us. And but I do want to mention a little bit about our the, another bachelor degree, which is a uh, viticulture and oenology. Um, so this is my favorite subject, which is um the wine industry. <laughs> now, um, seventeen. Um, so New Zealand wine is really, really um, it's easy to drink. Put it this way. Now, if you walk into any of the wine, um, uh, um, bar or the um wine shop, you will see that New Zealand wine often is more expensive than the um. Uh, our counterpart in Australia. Um, so I think partly because of we don't produce as many, but what we do, we do very well. And if you kind of um, the two type of wine that we are quite well known at is Sauvignon Blanc, which is e really really easy young wine to drink. Uh, for red wine, it's um, Pinot Noir. Um, so those that's because it's just it suits our climate very well. And so for Lincoln University, the viticulture is the work with grapes. Um, oenology is the science of winemaking. So we are the first university that introduced this um, degree in New Zealand and um, focus on the cool climate wine production. So we um, this bachelor degree integrate both and we combine the science-based knowledge as well as learning um, the actual practical. So our students do have to go and work in the um, in the uh, industry. And so I just want to show you that this is a typical uh, three years bachelor degree structure. Each semester you study four subjects. So a three year semester, a three year study is six semester. You study four subjects per semester a total 24 um, subjects. So what you could see is they will have some core subjects and electives. So for those students who are interested in food and um, um, food, uh, agribusiness and food marketing, you are interested in the wine science, you can also pick courses from here. Same for the wine science degree study, you could pick courses from the agribusiness and food marketing courses as well. So so what um, some of the things that we do, this is an example about how we, um, uh, how we teach our students is that apart from the theory that you study, you need to apply your learning into practice. So for example, our students have to actually work as a group and learn how to look after the grape vines and they need to learn how to harvest the grapes and also um, how to turn grapes into fruit juice and how to make the turn the fruit juice into action wine. So we take our students on to field trips and um, so that's a day trip to visit the industry. But for the students who come from, who are um, doing the viticulture or oenology degree, they do go on to a few tours, which we put them on the bus, they'll go and visit various um, part of the wine production regions. So this is the example of how our students make their own wine. <laughs> um, there is um, some madness ar around the science, but it's really cool, fun. Um, so this is some of the examples of how we took our students to on the field trips um, and the field tours. The, the, so they do get to connect with the industry and see what they study in class, how that translate into industry practice, yeah. So what you could see, they have to, they do have to learn how to taste the wine so that they actually learn how to produce. You don't do, have to be a serious wine drinker. <laughs> Remember, quality is versus the, uh, is probably better than the quantity. <laughs> yeah. Um. So this, but they do, they do actually have to understand how the large scale production works. Yeah. Um, so that is some of the cool things. So as part of the bachelor degrees, our students have to go and do the practical work. This is an example of how um, the viticulture or oenology students have to do the kind of work they have to do. 
um, like uh, the other students, we encourage our students to go on overseas. And so we do, because of the nature of our industry, we do have our students working across um, New Zealand, but also internationally. Um, this is just to give you some of the examples of the of the type of jobs that our students um, have um, do after they graduate. So I think what I come to say is that what what is important for students is you need to learn something that you love or you can relate to, and some of the things that you can do, um, if you like chemistry, if you like biology, if you like to work outdoor, if you are curious about making things, this could be some subjects that you want to do. Now I'm just going to switch. This is specifically for our Singaporean students more, but. We did. We do. We did have our uh, um, some Malaysian students study our uh, Bachelor of Landscape Architecture degree too. Um. So we um this. But I do want to dedicate this um type this part of the um qualification for our Singaporean students. Now um so school of our uh, school of agriculture uh landscape architecture is the oldest um school of landscape architect in. New Zealand and started in 1969. This is a, a we this is a four years professional studies. It also features just like the other two qualification a, a twelve weeks practical work. We also take students on field trips and field tours. But for this, it's more a studio based learning, and um and the students do, um have a lot of connection and experience with international learning as well. So what you can see here is another year. It's another example of a four years bachelor degree structure. This what you can see is the journey of a four years um, students developing their skills. So first year you are doing a combination of um, design skill, the theory, but you could see that this is some of the work that our students design. And as part of that, you um, our students do actually understand the relationship between environment and landscape. As for year two, they started to look at um, the professional view of the year. So they started looking at the spatial design, um, understanding the patterns and how to connect the um, providing um, design solutions. So what you could see that the students, you can see the nature of the work from first year to the second year. As we're moving through, you will see that the, the work has developed. Yeah. Um, the third year, you do have to look at multiple skills and you need to apply the communication skills that you have you have developed and understand the advanced theory. So you start to understand the brief from the client and how to develop a brief into actually commercial projects. Yeah. Now, fourth year is you do you have to solve complex design problems in different settings. So what you can see here, so it, this is a studio based design learning. Um, what you could see is this is kind of the uh, the final project work that you could see. Um, what what you you will you will learn a combination of urban, suburban, um, rural design depending on your interest. Um, we do take our students onto field trips and field tours as well, so that you can actually see how a design on paper into a reality. Yeah, for Singapore, for example, Singapore as an island, as a country, as a city, it's a fine example of beautiful landscape um, designers' work. How beautiful landscape design will totally change the feel and the look of the environment. And so on that note, I do want to um, introduce Jeremy Go, who is originally from Singapore. This he just finished his bachelor degree. This is his work um, of his exhibition and um it's called the gatherings as Art Arthur's point that is based in um, a concept of home away from home. And on that note, um, Eugene, could you just play the video of the School of Landscape Architects for me? And then I think we are nearly there. 
there's a huge demand for landscape architects and especially in New Zealand, the market is growing um, as more and more um, employers, agencies uh, and multidisciplinary companies realise the importance of what a landscape architect can bring to a project. They look to our students as being basically the top and the cream. I did a Bachelor of Landscape Architecture, it's my first degree. I did it when I was 29 so I was a bit of a late starter but I really liked the idea that I was going to come out with a qualification so that I could start practicing as a landscape architect. They don't necessarily hit the ground running, however they come with a very well-rounded understanding of, of the discipline of landscape architecture, the design philosophy and the theoretical thinking behind it. The special thing that we do here at Lincoln um, for our landscape architecture degree is that we've got dedicated space for the students. We have beautifully designed studios which are um, in our new building and They've got room to um, store all of the equipment they need as well as to have the space that they need to lay out all their plans to do, all the design work they want to build models um, and to be as creative as they possibly can. I think Lincoln's really good at, at matching graduates with um, the professional workforce so they provide opportunities where you can go along and network with um, practicing professionals. I think for potential employers, um, a Lincoln graduate from our Bachelor of Landscape Architecture degree is well balanced across all of the different facets that we uh, as landscape architects operate under and they succeed in all of those facets. Given our experience with Lincoln graduates I just say go for it. Um, a Lincoln graduate is you know, well rounded, we've had nothing but success with our Lincoln graduates and I can see that happening in the future as well. I mean they're very highly sought after. One of the, the big things I would probably say to any potential student or parent who's thinking about um, bringing someone here is that we have a really good blend of urban as well as rural design that we're being taught here. The contexts of both uh, are included in the course. The courses are also small as well, so you have a really strong relationship with your tutors as well as your fellow students. So it's a really strong professional um, cohort that you go through as well, and you can really feel that you're part of a family here. Landscape architecture is one of those degrees where you can tailor it to meet whatever stage of life you're at. At any age you're, you're accommodated, the staff are great, approachable, you definitely get the knowledge that you need. Right, what do you think? <laughs> I hope I'll convince a couple of students to look at landscape architects as an alternative. <laughs> um, um, don't worry, I'm going to wrap up soon. Um, like other universities, we have really good, um, good infrastructure and facilities and support system for students. But I want to highlight here, so, but we do, so apart from the library, the um, advisors, on-campus visa renewal, um, career services, uh, learning support, health center on campus we have 700 beds on campus so you can have on um self-catered uh fully catered halls of residence on campus of all of that i want with um, our farms vineyards etc i do want to highlight one app is that you can see here there's a safe LVU app which our students will download on their phone so it will tell you things like the campus status for example and what's the immersion emergency contact safety toolbox what is the emergency procedure so um so these are kind of um one touch thing in case you need some support or you don't know where to go uh, or during the night you want to call the security you can't remember to burn the number that is where our students get to see. And so um, so for, it's also helpful for the parents because then they'll be able to see the campus opening, for example. I'm gonna finish a few things is that I know that students do want to know about scholarships. At undergraduate level, we do have a school level scholarship for students who just finished their high school studies that able to meet direct entry for bachelor degree. But we do have other kind of more small value undergraduate program pathway and vice chancellor scholarships that our students can apply for. So please talk to um, AECC's team to 
on any of these scholarships and how to apply at Lincoln University. So for students who are looking at the postgraduate programs, particularly our three uh, semester 180 credit top masters. So these are the list of the top masters that we have. So they are more professional masters. They do not have this research dissertation. So it's not designed to make you to bridge you into um, uh, PhD studies. However, these are great if you are looking at study as a professional development of the conversion as an add-on to your current portfolio. So for the for this um, range of top masters, we do have a combination of seven thousand to ten thousand New Zealand dollars uh, merit scholarships. As long as you have B plus average in your final year of your bachelor degree, you will automatically get the scholarships. So most of these bachelor uh, masters. The three semester, they are, the fees is between about forty-four thousand to about forty-eight thousand New Zealand, uh, forty-seven thousand New Zealand dollars, uh, for the whole program. So if you do get awarded the scholarship, um, it can be quite useful. Um, so so please talk to the uh, AECC team about this. I'm just going to finish with a few of our students. We do have um, Tui who is currently fruit picking in Alexandra. I'm actually picking apples because it's summer, just to give her an idea. She loves New Zealand because she, her favorite is actually the field trips. Um, um, so she's um, that's what she likes doing. Um, the next thing we have Karen from Indonesia. I think she's working up in Marlborough at the moment. Um, again, doing her practical work. Um, she, she likes agribusiness because it's not, not mainstream, but give her a little bit of edge. Yeah, um, we have um, Poi who is from Thailand. She's doing Bachelor of Commerce in Agriculture, but next year she's going to switch to Verticulture because she decided that she doesn't want to work on the dairy farm. <laughs> she likes the plant science better. Uh, um, so Malika, she is actually from India. She's loving the Verticulture Oenology degree. She's a straight A student, so I'm very, very proud of her. And last but not least, Zhu Ming is originally from Penang. Um, he has actually already finished his Bachelor of Agriculture. But what one thing I love about his um, work experience is that he worked, he spent one summer working uh, on a dairy um, farms. And with that um, uh, money that he made on that um, practical work, he got himself a secondhand car, which is really cool. <laughs> um, so, uh, Last but not least, I hope that um, I've given you enough information. Uh, my apologies if I talk too much. Over to you. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you very much for a very precise and, and how Lincoln plays his stuff as a very specialist university. It's very interesting to see how how <clears throat> how you, you guys incorporate, you know, the the was it field trips and also the internships or practical work, you know, in the in the programs, which is very good for students. You see, because they need to be in the having some sort of hands-on sort of knowledge, you know, and also work to actually enjoy and learn about the particular program. So yeah, it is pretty good. Um, I just want to learn one thing, right? Also, I guess most people want to know as well, right? Because um, Link is in Christchurch, which is in the South Island, right? How is the weather going to be like? Roughly, like, will, will it be snowing in the week? It will be very cold because everyone's here South Island, so it's going to be cold. That's what the perception is. Or during the summer, it will be very hot or will it be just okay? Um, we our weather is quite changeable. So, mm -hmm. um, like this morning, it was quite warm, about twelve degrees, and then it dropped down to eight. And I think looking at the sunshine out of my um out of the window, I think it might be about eighteen degree approximate. Mm -hmm. So even though I dress like this, but um, you do need to be prepared. Um, the weather changes. So um, one day it can be 22 degrees. Another day it could be 16 degrees. So we have this saying is four weather in a day. Okay. Um, in winter, um, in some parts of New Zealand, South Island, we do get to st we do get snow. Um, mm -hmm. um, you can feel the snow on your fingertip. 
on that when the snow, um, um, when it's snowing right on the mountains. Mm -hmm. um, as a city, we don't get to snow that often, um, unfortunately or fortunately, because we are right by the sea, but um, we seldom um, snow down to the sea level for Christchurch. Um, my whole time I live in Christchurch for the last 15 years, um, probably snow up to like, you know, that the university have to close maybe twice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, right. so it is livable. I could mm -hmm. assure you that this that originally from Malaysia, I live and so can you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good to know. Um, okay. So for the accommodation part, right? I know that you mentioned about uh, Keta and South Keta, but several other places as well, right? So around, around nearby the area, are there like any like um, any groceries, like, especially with the Asian groceries, also like Asian restaurants or cafes around? So I, I'm, I'm really sure there are going to be like local delicacies around, but are there any like Asian delicacies or like uh, groceries around the area? I know city there are going to be some, but around the campus, are there any of these? Um, we mean so our closest supermarket is about um seven minutes walk from the campus. Mm -hmm. There is an Asian um section, so you can buy things like miko ring and stuff um that the instant noodles you can. Um, mm -hmm. so there's an Asian food section that you can buy from the um from the newer supermarket. Um. We do have uh, Chinese takeaway, Thai takeaway, Asian fusion takeaways. So um, within walking distance from um, Lincoln, um, we didn't. So from it's not that far. I live in Christchurch City. I come into work. It takes me about half an hour's um, driving. Um, so it's nothing in the KL standard, right? <laughs> yeah. um, um, it's like. I don't know, city to PJ, that kind of distance. Um, uh, so we do have a uh, good Asian food. Uh, so we have, for me, I had um, fried kway teow last night, chak kway teow last night for dinner. <laughs> and uh, at, uh, it's, it was 11 New Zealand dollars, but big enough for two meals. So you can find some good um, Asian food, particularly Malaysian food. Um, yeah, and there is an Indi uh, Indonesian uh, uh, restaurant or should I say food outlet in the Riverside market as well. Yeah. Okay, just to add on one, uh, one part, I think anything that student discounts or for, for those like for the student, let's say the show student ID or anything like that for transport or when, when they're purchasing anything or they're eating around, they need like sort of discount like that? Um, yes and no. We, but the, so for students, if they are, um, if they have a, what we call Metro bus card, um, so the maximum they, they will pay per week is 38.50 a week. That's unlimited access. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, um, they just buy the card and they load the, they preload the card and they can, that's the maximum value that they spend. Yeah, okay. and for student ID, some of the um, it it pays to ask. Sometimes you get, sometimes you don't. But the but um, students are pretty savvy. Uh, there will be some outlets that will have student discount, and there will be yeah. Okay, I guess um now um we are quite clear on a bit of a lifestyle and how how is it going to be like studying Lincoln. So I will proceed to the Q and A session for now. And then uh, because we have quite a, a number of questions here. So the first one we have from uh, Chris is, um, I'm working at Ministry of Agriculture in Indonesia and wondering if there is there any special scholarship arrangement to agreement for me or arrangement? Um, yeah, Chris, uh, we have a um, MOU with the uh, the research and development department, you could talk to the HR department to see whether there are specific scholarship arrangements through your professional development. But we have just have a, um, we have one of our PhD students um, just graduated with, uh, just finished his PhD and he will graduate in May. Aditya has a, um, he's going to be like the, um, I think he will graduate with distinction. 
So yes, <laughs> um, it's worth investigating with your um, with your HR department. Um, but just for the um, for Chris, I just want to mention that you should also look at the New Zealand um, um, scholarships that's offered by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of um, uh, New Zealand government. So it will open for applications. I think at the end of January each year, you will have four weeks period to um, apply for that scholarship. And what you need to do is you could just list Lincoln University as your first choice. And you can talk to me specifically about your background and what kind of um, um, program you want to study for Lincoln. Yeah. Okay, right. that's really insightful. Um, our next question is, uh, it's talking about Lincoln got how many Malaysians? I guess this one you can answer as well for many Singaporeans and Indonesia as well, since we're doing for three countries. Approximately, yeah. we don't. Uh, we have approximately twenty Malaysian students, mm -hmm. approximately thirty Indonesian students. Right now, Indonesian speak Malaysians um, at Lincoln University. Um, a few um, Singaporean yeah. students, yeah. not too many. But uh, we have about, I think last time, probably about three. Yeah. <clears throat> OK. Then they are mostly spread across different courses, right? Yeah. No, I just want to pre-warn you. Um, for mm -hmm. whatever your subject you study, you might be one of the only few uh, um, babies of <laughs> In, mm -hmm. in the class yeah so it, it is actually very good it trains your um independence and but it also allows you to you do have the community support so don't worry we have a um international clubs and we also have a indonesian club a malaysian student associations yeah okay it's pretty good at least that's they get, they get the support and then they get to mix with more new friends from new zealand or other, other countries as well yeah. yeah. Um, the next question is, uh, how is the flight journey from Malaysia to Lincoln? I guess because you mentioned there's a couple of flights, right? So in general, how long would it take like from KL to Lincoln or just Malaysia in general? <laughs> Lincoln? Um, so so for Malaysia, um you can so if you the if you travel with Singapore Airline, um mm -hmm. so you can travel anywhere for um the Singapore through uh Christchurch directly. So there's a direct mm -hmm. flight from um, Singapore to Christchurch. And so that's about nine, between nine to 10 hours um, flight. And so that's, and so that, that same theory applies to uh, Malaysia and Indonesia as well. Okay. Yeah. So you might add a couple of hours for the domestic transfer from, mm -hmm. that, from that. Yeah. Probably about half day still, right? Uh, one night, okay. overnight, you get on the flight at yeah, um, about eight o'clock, and then in the morning you are here. Yeah, this sounds pretty good. <laughs> okay. Um, the next one is uh, how does your masters of agriculture science compare to other NZ universities? Yeah, how is it? Is I it think Era Tanya, yeah. it's um we are so the master of agriculture science is a two years research masters, mm -hmm. so it comes down to I think one thing I like about our postgraduate study is really research, uh, uh focus, but mm -hmm. the courses the available the um the courses and the um varieties that you can choose. It's quite, you have quite a wide range of um, options. And for the agriculture science, um, we do have some fantastic researchers. Um, so I think it is worth investigating, but it does depend on the research you want to do in your subjects area, because it is at the end of the day. It's not about how good we are compared to another university. It's whether um, mm -hmm. your research area in your second year, whether we have we also have the right expertise for you. So mm -hmm. when it comes to PhD sub subjects, is one area. Another area is what, and also the um what research you want to do, how that's going to link to your future career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um. One thing I think I do like about Lincoln University is that 
you are not a number. We know your name, even though our Faculty of Agriculture and Life Sciences is the um, is kind of a very it's very research intense. The professors do know you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also you are not a number. You are one of the you know the the, the three thousand students that we have. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a very personalized attention in a way, which is very good for a student as well to get connected with the lecturers and all. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next question is, um, are there any other popular courses other than agriculture related? I guess you mentioned a couple as well, but any, any more other than the ones you mentioned or highlighted earlier? Um, we so for us environmental management, environmental science, environmental policy. Um, for bachelor for our common subjects, um, finance, accounting, economics, supply chain management. That's um professional accounting. Those are the cool things that we we do have. Sports and recreation. Uh, and also um tourism management. Those are um other areas that I would suggest students to think consider okay yeah that's good um next one is uh, what is the job opportunity for every business and food marketing ah renee you can be anything <laughs> <laughs> you can look into supply chain import export you can look at product designs you can go and work in the food industry quality assurance uh, um, you can also get into the traditional uh, marketing um, subjects that the traditional business subjects um uh role that a business graduate will get into you can actually get into but on top of that you are specialized in the food and beverage and the agriculture sector okay uh okay i mean following that question i guess i go to the next one which talks about for master of horticulture science what is the percentage of graduating students finding jobs in the career field i mean it's the same kind of question but this is for master of horticulture science instead uh, I'll go for the border one the next uh, for for last part. And this one, I this question, I'll go for last part. Yeah. yeah. I think the I think um Turi, you probably um I'm not I won't be able to pull that stats for you straight away like this. I think what you would see is that our graduates employment rate is six percent higher than the other um universities. So that is quite a um I think that's probably a good number to work on. I do want to mention about the, instead of thinking about percentage, think about employability, what you are learning. So when you're stu for students who come from the Master of Horticulture Science area, sometimes they already, they have a focus on where they want to do for further research. Um, so I do think that um, there is a demand in this in the in the science graduate yeah um so uh don't look at the while well, stats is important don't look at stats look at the relevance and the connection for the particular university with the industry um but just to put that into context the horticulture industry is a, a it's a one billion i think just the wine industry itself is a one billion industry and um so um about you know it's it's a very very strong um area for for new zealand um economy okay uh let's go for another question um if i want to study with, uh, with culture are there any special requirements or prerequisites or anything that you need to uh, I know for entry crime or anything like that. Um, well, you need to like um, chemistry if you like, uh, if you can, and also if you like biology, that will even be better. But if you haven't got the prerequisites, it is okay as long as you want to learn. For our, you can study. Um, um, our, when we teach our first year degree um, students, we assume that they don't have um, prior knowledge. So mm -hmm. if you want to learn, you can. And if you don't meet the academic entry, we will always have the um, 
um, what should I say, a bridging program or pre-degree pre -degree program that can help you bridge that knowledge gap. Um, so that is kind of the academic relevance. You 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 do you just need to make the standard um, entry requirement for English language and the percentage requirement for the bachelor degree. Yeah, and okay. you can just talk to the um, AECC team for that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Um, that's pretty good to know. Our last few questions. Uh, this one is for post study work visa. Is it really automatically applied or has it uh, has to meet any certain requirements? Okay. Now, for the post-study work visa, um, it is it, you have to apply for it. You need to show that you've got the finance. You... Um, you need um and also you need to show that you completed the study generally speaking it's it's quite a straightforward process but you need to put in the application um properly yeah and you should apply before your current visa expired okay and yeah and you're saying anything else Okay. And don't worry, you can always ask questions to your um to the university um mm -hmm. support team. They'll be able to point you to the right direction. And if we don't have the answer for you, we can always refer you to a licensed immigration advisor. Okay, that's good. At least they'll get some guidance either from university or the guided I mean the advisor. Okay. So I mean I said earlier that we'll leave this question for the last one. So which is the hardest one, I guess, to answer is would there be any updates on the border of New Zealand? <laughs> That's gonna be the hardest question, I guess. I think for short answer is that we don't know. Um I think um put it this way, I think um the COVID situation is something that we are not really um equipped for or prepare for so if you think we are learning something new every day and mm -hmm. i think um there is hope because there's um upcoming vaccine it may not open as quickly as you and i would like it to be but i think good things are worth waiting for um we are also learning from countries like Thai, um like singapore where you are implementing um some kind of a slow but steady process and i think eventually it will open again but i think good things take time just want to make that to add that currently there are 194 phd um students that are getting the process of getting borders exemptions to come in. So they will go on to the managed quarantine system. And so I think once we learn from that cohort of students, we will, I think the New Zealand government will be able to um, improve more uh, exemptions part in the pipeline. Yeah. Okay. I mean, at least we are seeing some sort of a development in terms of like improvement or improvement in that sense. So hopefully the borders could be open soon. But I mean we don't know we don't know how soon, but hopefully, you know, slowly, eventually we'll see everything gets better. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um yeah, that's pretty much the questions that we have from the audience from different platforms. So I guess I want to say that once again, thank you very much for all the questions. And also we hope um Annie managed to clear, you know, most of your doubts or whatever sort of questions. And now I'm um, pretty much now it has come to an end for today's live session. And for for to summarize, um, Miss Annie, do you have like anything to share with the audience? As a summary or to close up? Um, yeah. thank you very much for the opportunity and the time for the um for this session and the opportunity to um answer some questions i think one do one thing i do want to say that it has been a hard year so please stay positive we have got to this end next year could be a challenging start but we'll get through this together um there will be good days there will be challenging days but um i think vaccines will be coming at some stage 
So stay positive. We will be able to see each other face to face yeah. sometimes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's a very good closing speech, I see. Um, so thank you very much again for the valuable information you provide about, I mean, about the Lincoln University and also the City of Christchurch. And I would like to thank everyone for gracing our live session with your presence, the questions as well. We truly appreciate it. So if you have further questions uh, regarding studying at Lincoln University or in New Zealand uh, in general, please contact um, us via ICC Global Social Channel, um, which is um, Facebook and even YouTube as well. And we'll link it as well. Then, or you can visit our website as well. So, if you still want more of something like this, which uh, we will have one last live session for this, um, I would say this event is from the University of Auckland, which will start uh, in Singapore and Malaysia time at 1.30, which is uh, 12.30 in Indonesian time. And remember to join the live session later as well. And that's also the final session for everyone. Uh, and also follow us, uh, ACC Global Malaysia, Singapore and Indonesia, the social channel for the latest news and activities that we have uh, for you guys. So pretty much, uh, thank you once again. See everyone and take care uh, of this pandemic and hopefully things will get better soon for every one of us. Yeah, I hope right. to see you too. I mean, like, uh, and whether you are coming here or we are going there or students going there. Yeah, yeah. I do. I miss... I miss ASEAN. <laughs> <laughs> so I want yeah. to come home too. Yeah. Yep, All right. Too. Hopefully you see you soon too. Okay. Yeah. Thank you everyone. Okay. Merry okay. Christmas. Happy New Year everybody.